Alrighty, what's up guys? So today we're going to do some uh, competitive bit constructed with uh, with this deck here. Can I not see this here? Alright, so the Simic Climb deck is pretty interesting. Basically what we're doing is we're advancing our way to the late game via Wild Girth Walker and our Explore Package of uh, Merfolk Branch Walker and Jade Light Ranger. Um, and then we are heavily utilizing Hadana's Climb, Vine Mare, and Carnage Tyrant to make unblockable, hex-proof, you know, fat, nasty, 2020 flying, you know, trample dinosaurs that we just fling into the enemy. Uh, this list isn't solved. Um, our sideboard has a bit of everything in it. Um, we have uh, Dive Down for spot removal, Silent Gravestone for uh, Golgari matchups. We have uh, Blink of an Eye, uh, Amulet of self Safekeeping, because I've seen a lot of uh, token decks recently. Um, same with uh, Damping Sphere for uh, shutting down Drake decks. Um, the Death Scourge Scavenger is just kind of an additional Golgari like assistance. I, I fear that with our uh, like rampy hexproof go tall strategy, that Golgari will kind of be a problem. Uh, with their ability to recurse and make two for one trades against us. So Death Gorge Scavenger just kind of helps even that out a little bit. And because we only run one copy of Vivian Reed, there's no like real penalty to running Immortal Sun. Immortal Sun makes all of our guys better, uh, makes our dudes easier to cast. And if we end up making it to like a match where we uh, where we utilize where where we are a little bit more stable in the late game, then I think Immortal Sun is a fine inclusion. Uh, as far as our uh, the rest of our package, four lane of war, uh, two main deck spell pierce because I think having it in game one is better than not. There's a lot of stuff on the uh, on the ladder right now that being able to main deck spell pierce and get a spell pierce on you know game one, whether you're on the play or on the draw, is just really really crucial. Then we've got treasure maps. Uh, despite the fact that we're running 25 lands, uh, sometimes lands just don't agree, and treasure map helps with that. Not only do we have the scries to smooth our draws out, but we also do get three treasure tokens at some point or another. Uh, so that's really nice. Really, the, uh, the 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 big kit here is Hadana's climb, making shit just huge and nasty. And then we've also got four Blanchwood armors uh, for game one, at least. Usually those will come out game two. Uh, because they're the like least necessary, they're kind of a win more. Uh, so we'll swap those out with you know you, whatever it is that we require for the matchup. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Sauces frites. Frites? Frites. So, this has to go. This is more playable. I go first? My opponent put me on the play. That's very interesting. So we're, we probably have some kind of control match up here. which makes this a little risky if they have spot removal. I think the only thing that would want to go first would probably be Jeskai or Drake's, or want us to go first. That, that's really weird. I don't know what to think about that. I suppose we'll keep this, but we stand a very good chance of getting blown out here when we don't hit our second mana on turn two. Oh, there we go. So now we're able to wild growth or treasure map, depending on what our, uh, our opponent does here. Uh, with greens, I think I think against green anything, uh, we'll just get the treasure map down here on the ground. Swing in with our land of war. I don't want to reveal the Hadana's climb yet. Hmm. 
Do we want Hydra here? No, I, I don't think we need Hydra. Hydra is a quick and easy way to flip Hidana. That's interesting. So this is probably mana screwed Golgari. That maybe that's. I don't. I don't I'm not. I'm still not really sure why they put us on the. Uh, Yeah, let's just drop Adonis, put a 1-1 one, one on our wild growth. Swing out. drops murder so they're definitely Golgari of some sort uh, so let's just go ahead and Blanchwood armor or wild growth walker go to combat pump it up and swing out all right so Golgari of some sort so we will definitely let's switch back to the other view. Uh, things we don't care about as much. Hadana's climb is less likely to stick. Um, Blanchwood armor is less likely to stick. So Immortal Sun seems fine. Death Gorge is a, a must. Uh, Blink of an Eye not so much, but Dive Down seems good. Perhaps Silent Gravestone. Maybe, maybe drop a map for one Hadana's climb. No, we need the maps for the tyrant. Perhaps drop spell pierce for Hadana. We're gonna be on the on the draw here. Now you know what? Against that, we will Hadana spell pierce. I think one spell pierce is statistically accurate. This seems fine. It's a little low. Our opponent already has mulliganed. Which makes me a little more inclined to keep this. Because as it is, without an interaction, we can turn three Hadana, or turn two Hadana rather. Um, or we can turn two 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 Hydra and then turn three Hadana flip Hadana for the Hydra. I'm really not happy with both of these on the top end. If we draw like a treasure map, we'll be fine. It's kind of a greedy keep. Mainly keeping just for these three uh, pieces. But if we do happen to draw like runner runner lands, then Carnage Tarrant looks good. I really like seeing the Wild Growth Walker here. That's that's pretty sizable in this matchup. I can expect uh, Lana War to get a uh, cast down here or a Moment of Craving. A fungal Infection. There we go. That's what I want to see. So we'll wild growth here. And depending on what our opponent does, we might Hydra for two next turn. Another land. So... Our opponent's on Golgari tokens. Which means I'm, I'm pretty comfortable Hydra-ing for two here. If nothing else, we'll get uh, some removal on the table. I'll keep some blockers back. Uh, blocking 1-1s one with Hydra is just so gross that they have to, they have to deal with that immediately. Otherwise, they just can't swing. Alright, 
Well, definitely picking up those lands. So we're going to spread our tokens out. I don't want Hadana to flip just yet. And we'll pass the turn here. Path of Discovery is pretty exciting. Another land. Alright, well, we uh, we will get an opportunity to use these, uh, these Carnage Tyrants. Alright, so we take a Sapperling off the table. Maybe? Maybe not. So maybe our opponent hasn't read Hungering Hydra, and he's interested in swinging this turn, or he has a, an Anthem effect, a Lord. Oh, Fungal Infection on top. That's interesting. So with Poison Tip Archer, he's kind of... Yeah, let's just go ahead and Carney T right off the jump. And what we're going to do is buff Hydra, flip the map, and we are going to... We'll just pass here. Or flip the, the Hadana's Climb, rather. Alright, so they make some tokens. They explore some tokens. So let's go ahead and Branch Walker and see what we get. Play our land. So it's worthwhile to swing our Wild Growth Walker here. Yeah, because if they, if they block with uh, anything, like any combination of Sapperlings, uh, we can just pump it with Winged Temple. Um, if they don't block with that and they just block with Poison Tip, then, you know, we get Poison Tip off the table, we, they have a Force in their hand, and then we can Carnage Tyrant them for a whole lot next turn. So we'll swing him in. Yep, yep. We'll drop another Carney T. And now they're in a really bad position because we're basically going to wipe the board with them. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Jade Light Ranger is beautiful here. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to drop Jade Light. Explore, explore. Carney T to the top, Carney T to the top. We are going to go to combat. Pump Carney T. And send the house. Yeah. We can't die on the crackback. And they have to block. opponent did not realize they have buffed our uh, our Hydra as well so we lose a bunch but they literally can't kill us and we'll drop another blocker and say go Yep, 
Yep. Good old 12-14 wild growth walker. No big deal. Alright, so that's uh that's match one down, and on to the next. I suppose uh Yeah, there we go. I suppose we can turn the uh, the volume of ambience. What is ambience? That sounds spooky. Minutes or minutes. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be an M or just a V in parentheses. Uh, not the best opening hand. Mildly playable. Uh, double Jade Light's fine. Hello, opponent. Druid of the Cow, big boy land of war. Uh, so we will go directly into Jade Light. Not land, god damn it. Uh, Blanchwood Armor. No. Ooh, a Gruul matchup. This is spicy. So uh, all of the lands. Well, Land of War can't block anyways, so we might as well start thinning the lands out of our deck. Uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll keep her. Oh no, I did this in the wrong order. Mistakes were made. Treasure map works. So we will map. Play Evolving Wilds, get a Forest, Squat, Scry with Map, and is Branch Walker enough? I mean, not really. Not really happy about Scrying that to the bottom, but I need more action than that. Um, I suppose I'm fine swinging Jade Light here, because if he blocks it with Steel Leaf, I'm, I'm good with that. Alright, so he'll get in for 5 on this turn. Yep, yep. Carney T, all of the lands. That's pretty exciting. My god. Uh, so we can't swing here. So... How much do I care about this? I suppose we're required to have a really good answer on the top of the deck. The answer would have to be better if we left Carnage Tyrant alive than it would if we left Steel Leaf Champion alive, so we just double block Carney T here. Oh, another one. We got we got had. Well, we uh we did get an answer. 
Whether or not it will be enough remains to be seen. So we'll just trade off Carney T's here. Or will we? I don't think we will. I think we block Steel Leaf, Druid of the Cal. After we've declared blockers, we scry, force to the bottom. God damn. Well, Vivian Reed does not do it. Merfolk Branchwalker does not do it. So, that's probably a wrap. Yeah, that'll do it. Well, let's see. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana available. Yeah, there's there's no outs here. We might as well look with Vivian because we're going to take her out for this matchup. Yeah, nothing nothing does it here. Okay. On to game two. So against this, I like Immortal Sun. I like Dive Down to uh, effectively combat trick. Spell Pierce being out seems correct. Uh, Hungering Hydra. Hungering Hydra probably works well here with its soft and rage. Blanchwood Armor is dead. And then I suppose we bring in a Death Gorge Scavenger. It'll keep us in the game a little longer. Uh, via the two life, since both us and our opponent are just like all creatures all the time. Uh, our big goal here is going to be, you know, basically assemble our, our package faster. So we have to be very aggressive about the ramp, but we need something good to ramp into. Uh, so we'll be on the play. Uh, this is perfectly fine. Oh yes, straight to four opponent. Opponent's not out of the woods yet. A, a mulligan to four, and he's still got the uh, the potential here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and drop uh, Land of War on Land of War. And next turn, we are going to just... Like, with a land, we'll be perfect. Mm, no land. So do we want to be greedy here and punish our opponent for going to four? I think so. So... Wild Growth Walker. Swing Wild Growth Walker. Opponent does nothing, so now we just ball out. One land in this lets us Branch Walker as well. Yeah, so opponent had enough of that. Uh, I think we run it back the same. I don't really like Blink of an Eye in this, because their their big threats are hexproof as it is. Yeah, I think this is fine. With any luck, we didn't waste our good hand on the turn, or on the game that he mulled to four. Because, man, that, that hand was fire. This <laughs> is not so much... God, this is so risky. Like, we're on the draw. Our opponent doesn't really have spot removal. I mean, I guess... Could I just, like, lose a land of war for a real land? 
This is ridiculous. On the plus side, there's 25 lands in my deck, so... There's a pretty good chance I draw into land next turn. If I don't draw into land, I probably just branch walker. Alright, so land it is. So we'll wild growth walker. And land a war elf and say go. Opponent's going a little slow here. Our opponent brought in spot removal, which is honestly fine. Uh, because we are about to just stunt on them. So, and we pull the land. We'll go ahead and grab it now for a forest. And pass the turn. Opponent still can get a, uh, a good lava coil off against us. Sarkin's unsealing is fine. So I think we just uh, play the hand out here. We'll keep Dive Down up top. And drop Branch Walker. Swing in. Want to get this clock assembled real fast. If we don't lose... Vimeer's fine. If we don't lose our Elves... Oh yeah, this is going to be good. So we're going to do Hungering Hydra for four and hold up Dive Down. So let's go green, 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 green. Hydra for four. Uh, swing Branch Walker and Wild Growth Walker. Pass the turn. And our opponent's pretty... pretty dead here. So he targets that, we dive down that. That pumps to an 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh no, it was Hexproof, that's right. So let's go ahead and... ball out. They have to block Wild Growth Walker. Is there any way that they could block that wouldn't result in them dying? No, they're dead. So, having not ran this list competitively before, um, this is kind of a like a bit of a trial here and one thing that I'm noticing is our game one is considerably weaker than our post sideboard so it's possible that these these Blanchwood armors just need to come out entirely and maybe we actually just main board a dive down or two the other thing is perhaps we need to consider like instead of the spell pierce because again this Granted, this has only been only been two matches, but it hasn't been it hasn't looked good at any time. So maybe maybe something like Disdainful Stroke in the main board would be better. Um, there, I don't know if there's any decks right now other than like True White Weenie, like not even Boros Weenie, but just True White Weenie, that don't have a four or more spell. So, and even some of those lists run uh, Conclave Tribunal, which still counts. So let's go back to our run here. I'm interested in the uh, the control matchup with this. Well, our opponent here, uh, Muffin with the Teferi avatar. Very likely on some sort of control plan. So... A lot of times, players in Arena, like, can you can you really ignore the tell that his his avatar is Teferi? Is he going to be running a non-control matchup? Because if he is control, this hand is super weak to it. 
In fact, I don't like this hand one way or the other. It's got to go. This is fine. We're only playing one spell a turn, which I really don't like. But we're on the draw. Vine Mare's got to go. Our opponent has green. It's just green all around today, huh? So we'll drop blue and say go. Drop an island. Alright, so opponent wild growth walkers. So I am inclined to do the same. Memorial to Folly. So he's on a Golgari matchup. We will immediately Branch Walker and hope for a land. Give me an Islands. That is a Spell Pierce. And... I suppose we just pass here. There's no reason to swing. So that's really unfortunate for us. They did draw two, two lands, though. You swing to both of them? Okay. So our opponent thinks they're on the beatdown. And I am inclined to agree with them, courtesy of these draws. I think our best bet here is to just play Land of War and say go. That's really unfortunate. So, this is interesting because although we've had similar matchups in all of our matches, um, if you notice here, I have a Spell Pierce and a Blanchwood Armor in hand, and again looking very weak. So I think, I think in the next draft they just need to come out entirely. Spell Pierce to the sideboard seems fine, but Blanchwood just seems very win more. Opponent had Memorial to Folly, so I'll treat it as if it is Golgari. Which probably indicates dive downs, and I don't really want to blink of an eye Golgari stuff. I guess blink of an eye on Wild Growth Walker is really good. So maybe that's worth two. Two answers for four of their cards. Might be a little overzealous. Death Gorge Scavenger is fine. Hadana's Climb is probably going to be dead more often than not. Vivian Reed. It's almost worth dropping Vivian Reed to bring in two Immortal Sons, just because I'd rather shut down their Planeswalkers than deal with ours. Then again, if they have Doom Whisperer or something of that nature, Vivian Reed's really good for that. So perhaps Hungering Hydra goes out. Yeah, I actually forgot about that. Hungering Hydra did need to come out. Um, we'll drop to one Silent Gravestone, because other than Fine Broker and Fine Finality... No, you know what? Two Silent Gravestones is fine. Uh, they're perfectly fine grave uh, like turn one Graveyard Hate cards. So we're at 59. Immortal Sun, Immortal Sun. Vivian reads out, and I think we'll play it like that. So we're a little bit more top-heavy this time, but hopefully that should progress us to the... It should ease our transition into the late game, because I feel like this is going to be a bit grindier. And we get just immediately punished. I... Like, this is... This leaves 21 lands in our deck. We have no turn one play. We are on the play. I really don't like this keep. But I am worried that mulliganing this will result in a worse hand. I, I suppose I'll keep this. Opponent mulligans twice. So I'm now feeling a lot better about this. And we will start off with Forest Go. Well, we now have all of the lands required to cast Immortal Sun.
Good brick. All of the lands required to cast a mortal sun. So if we're capable of it, we'll block Merfolk Branch Walker with Wild Growth Walker. Otherwise, we might have to block Midnight Reaper here. Like, taking three damage feels really bad when we have this slow of a hand. We need two more turns to get any action to happen. Um, against, against their deck, I don't want to Carnage Tyrants first, because it's very likely they have a Plague Crafter that they're capable of putting out. Our opponent didn't want to, didn't want to go there. That's very interesting. So I can kick Blink of an Eye and draw a card. Am I inclined to? I suppose I could do that to Midnight Reaper. Or Lana War Elf. They have four mana. Yeah, let's draw a card. Dive Down is fine, so we'll play Hinterland Harbor here. And pass the turn. If we can stall one turn with this. Plays Land of War. That's really unfortunate. I wanted him to use the Vraska's Contempt on it. But I suppose it's not a terribly juicy target. So... We will just block the ranger, dive down it, protect ourselves from four damage. With one Vrasus Contempt in hand, oh, J Light Ranger right on time. Um, so let's see here. We have six. It really doesn't feel good, but I think we actually need the J Light here. Get life, get counters on the Wild Growth Walker. Because if I if I Immortal Sun, he's going to Vraska's Contempt it. If I Jade Light it, he's probably going to Vraska's Contempt it. But Immortal Sun gives us the inevitability. Immortal Sun it is. He needs Assassin Trophy to answer that, or any of the Planeswalkers, which I know they have. But Immortal Sun shuts him down. So I think Immortal Sun here. I'm saying go is like the best option. So he Vraska's Wild Growth Walker. Gets in for a bit. Hits us for a million. We draw another card. So double Carney T doesn't quite do it. We're able to not die this turn though. So let's Carney T. Let's J Light Ranger. So if our opponent doesn't have spot removal, then we're able to stay alive here. Three cards in hand, though, it's pretty likely. That's unfortunate. Ooh, fine finality also. That's really unfortunate. Any spot removal and we are super dead. Chupacabra on top. With another Carnage time. Oh, he ditches it. Plays a land. Swings out. He doesn't swing out. Bro, you crazy dog? Look at all these lands we're getting. I'm glad we kept that greedy hand, because it uh kinda paying off here. So how dead are we here? We'll go to two without spot removal. We'll pass the turn. Opponent scoops it up! He doesn't have an answer! That's crazy. I would have said that we were radically unfavored to to win that game. That is nuts. Alright, so Blink of an Eye Draw came in handy there. Do I want to change this at all? Going on the draw... I really don't think so. I think this is fine as is. 
not a great matchup for us, I don't imagine. But like, I, I don't understand why our opponent scooped it up there. That's crazy. Like, granted, if we had drawn into Hadana's climb, um, we had a really good opportunity of just beating them down over the next couple of turns. But still, like he could have, he could have swung in for everything, got us down to two. We would have only been able to block and kill three creatures. He would have taken some damage, drew some cards, any spot removal, uh, taking care of Jade Light would have would have done it. Like I, I don't know why he scooped it up there. Not to mention all of their other options, like you know Eldest Reborn and stuff like that. You know, being able to hit our again, again with this. Um, being on the draw, I have to ship this. Oof. Well, that's about a wrap. So uh, we'll go ahead and take our take our beats here. I'm actually not even going to bother with uh, uh, playing Land of War here. I'm just going to Evolving Wilds and immediately grab an island. Try to filter some of the, the land out of this deck. And we are appropriately rewarded for it. So, we'll land a war here. If you wild growth walkers, I want to be able to get a, a, a sizable blink of an eye off of it. And draw a card off of it. Midnight Reaper is fine. Now, the question is, do we... I guess we just hold up. See what they do. Maybe they play stuff pre-combat. They do play stuff pre-combat. So, we will go ahead and bounce that. Draw a card. Not land. Not land. Sweet Christmas. Sweet Christmas! Alright, so we're going to take three here. Plus whatever else our opponent is desiring. Yep, that's the thing. The good news is, the second chapter of Eldest Reborn does absolutely nothing. Our opponent gets nothing. A sweet forest you pulled off of me. Second Midnight Reaper. We'll take it to 14. Our opponent has the option of Lana War Elf and Lana War Elf. Uh, we will immediately evolving wilds for a forest. And pass the turn. So we're going to have to take a chump here. Opponent gets a free Lana War Elf. Yep. So, uh... Chomp, take it to 8. I don't think that there's anything we can do to come back from this. Playing the land there was probably a mistake. My god. Well, there's not a whole lot that we can do about that. And that's game. Good game, opponent. We managed to take it to three games. I don't know how, because our opponent did not cooperate in literally any of those games in that match. Or our, our deck did not cooperate. But either way, onwards. Onwards to the next one. Colgate Cavity Patrol. <laughs> I wonder if that's a joke with the, uh, the Jace Avatar looking like toothpaste. Trash. That's fine. Jade Light on the play is really nice. Like, regardless of our opponent's matchup. Colgate Cavity Patrol? <laughs> is that a... <laughs> is that a Just Guy Control uh, joke? Do I, do I want that, actually? Just to have blue online? I don't imagine I care, to be honest. Our deck is primarily green. Punished. No, cancel. This, that. Treasure map's good. I have considered going up to four of with the uh, the treasure map. Ooh, ooh, that's spicy. So let's jade light here, or do we treasure map and hold a scry? 
You'd have to play two... Well, realistically, he would just have to play one Merfolk to trade evenly with our Branch Walker. If it's the one that gives a plus one, plus one. So, I'm, I'm fine taking some beats here and just saying go. Yeah, there you go. So, he can trade evenly. Doesn't take it. Alright. Hmm. Carney T, Carney T. I think Carney T to the bottom. Do we do this, or do we just say go? I really want that map flipped. Yeah, we'll just we'll do this. I know their deck ant uh, has uh, balance answers, and I don't want to risk putting Blanchwood armor on Merfolk Branchwalker and getting it bounced. At the moment, our creatures trade like quasi favorably. Getting rid of Deep Root Elite is a big deal. Yep, 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 yep. So with our opponent running deeper waters, we're definitely going to bring in the uh, Amulet of Safekeeping. Are we going to do anything with this mana this turn? If not, we should Evolving Wilds and pull a Island. I think we will Evolving Wilds and pull an Island. So let's... Hadana is on Jade Light. And pass the turn. I would swing there, but if our opponent chooses to not block, they stand a very good chance of just blowing us the fuck out this turn. And they are firing off. So let me just scry to get this out of the way. Um, I do not require additional land. Yep, yep, yep. Opponent still doesn't swing. That's very interesting. Uh, so we will Carney T. Put a counter on Carney T. No attacks. They go. So we are now on the full on Hadana's flipped plan. Yep. They're going to make a whole bunch of dudes. Sweet Christmas. That's a big boy. Oh, he didn't want to swing it. I wanted him to swing it there. So, the question is, I have four forests. If I blanch wood armor, Carney T, it's three to flip. If I blanch wood armor, Carney T, he becomes a 12-11. You know, if I had put one of those counters on Branch Walker, I could swing for lethal this turn. That's a mistake. So we will just have to Carney T. Treasure map. Island to the bottom. Flip map. Get dudes. Go to combat. Carney T. No attacks. Pass the turn. If we live through this turn, we kill him on the next. Deep Root Elite does not have Trample, so we are able to just, like, chump our way to victory.
not doing a great job of spreading the damage around my opponent. Oh, that's a very bold opponent. So, uh, we definitely get him, because our opponent has tapped themselves out of having a lethal answer. So we will, let's see, we have five, let's just go Blanchwood on Carney T. Go to combat, buff dude. Flying Carney T. Good game. So uh, we uh, we had a soft punt there, but we didn't get punished for it, so that's always nice. Uh, so we will drop Blanchwood uh, entirely, and Hungering Hydra against Merfolk doesn't seem great. So Di uh, Blink of an Eye seems phenomenal against Merfolk. I don't know about Immor Immortal Sun yet. Making it to turn six, like if we if we draw this on turn six and we have six lands, it's great. If it sits all game in our hand, it's a problem. I think we can. They don't have a lot of spell pierce targets. Deeper waters is like one, but amulet of safekeeping like kind of helps with that. Maybe we do keep it in. Uh, dropping Vivian Reed doesn't seem like a great idea. I think we just drop hungering. Hungering Hydra. I think we play it like this. See what happens. I don't understand why our deck keeps doing this to us. I am radically unenthused about all of this. And unfortunately we drew a second Hinderland Arbor. Of the possible land choices, that one is probably the worst. So opponent doesn't swing there and gives us the option. So I think I think we're just going to upkeep Blink of an Eye, Deep Root Waters. It's a three mana spell. I like that. If our opponent casts it again, that's fine. So if our opponent was going to cast it again, uh, we were going to Vivian and blow it up. Since they did not, we will go for maximum punish with Wild Growth Walker into Jade Light. Money. So they get one use out of it. I will absolutely 
Is there a point to block with Jade Light here? Let my opponent get in for 4, take me to 19. I think that's fine. So we will... <laughs> do we just blink of an eye again? Or do we Vivian? I think the blink of an eye plan is fine. Anything our opponent swings with, we're going to kill with Wild Growth Walker. No, we need to we need to stop them from going wide on us. And if they put damage into uh into Vivian, I'm fine with that. They can take her out. So we're going to get him really good next turn. This is going to be pretty funny. So let's plus Vivian. Yeah. You can't stop nature. Let's grab an island. Yeah. Play an island. Play treasure map. Pass the turn. So we hold our opponent off one more turn. And we get a branch walker. That's actually kinda advantageous. You know, in retrospect, in this particular situation, I think getting rid of, uh, like, not having the Immortal Sun is better than having it. I don't have any desire to trade with these guys. I'm a so, I really need Carnage Tyrant, like, post-haste. Adana's no good. Scry with map. Vine Mare still doesn't do it. Let's play the Hadanas. Let's buff. So let's see. He's got 5-5, five, 5-7. Five, five, like, I'm pretty sure we're just dead here. None of this stuff has trample, but it is just going to kill us outright. So I guess if we bump Wild Growth Walker up, it gives us options. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Pass the turn. I mean, I'm pretty sure you had us killed there, but alright, guy. Yeah, so now... Now we are able to block the Silver Gill Adept and kill it while taking no damage. 
but we still take a grip. So we use Land of War to block Jungleborn Pioneer, Wild Growth Walker here. And then if we double block there, we lose both of them. So I guess we just take 15 down to 7. So incidentally, in this position, a uh, perhaps I should have upkeep scribe, <laughs> all things considered. Yep, I should have upkeep scribe, because that would have been Carney T. Still wouldn't have done it, he was one turn too late. But we'll take it to game three. So if I did put the Immortal Sun in, it needs to come out. Okay, I did not, that's good. So I don't like the spell pierce. I honestly feel like Hungering Hydra is just better. Trades better on the board. Perhaps a Death Gorge Scavenger to keep us in the game later. It's hard to board against Merfolk because they're just... Th the tribe is so fucking weird. Oh my god, deck why? I feel like it's been every game. Every game we've had this happen to us. No, there was that one where our opponent mulliganed to four. That was the, uh, the one time we weren't radically punished. I can't even keep that. Well, if nothing else, we'll get a Hadana's off. Yep, Silver Eel. We draw Jade Light anyways. So, we're just going to immediately get on the beatdown. Um, I don't think we have inevitability with this hand. Not with all of these double greens. Opponent swings in for two, that's very interesting. Um, do I want to flip and use it now? Yeah, I guess fuck it, I do. We're going to go for the maximum amount of damage possible every fucking turn. If our opponent can stop our branch walker, this is kind of unfortunate. But we also now have four mana. Yeah! Hadana does it! Look at that! Look at that! That's what I'm talking about. Despite our deck just sabotaging us at every turn, we are 3 and 1, baby! Okay. <laughs> God damn. I guess. I guess I have to land a War Elves here. Because it turns on Jade Light next turn, which I really want. No blocks. Oh, our opponent's on that Sultai nonsense. That's really exciting. So let's leave a blue open, because I don't know what we're about to see.
Oh, there's a land. That's that's good. Lands are alright. Yep, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I definitely think Spell Pierce in the sideboard for Disdainful Stroke mainboard might be more more up our alley. Uh, so let's see, if I play a land, I can Hungering Hydra for four. Or do I just immediately go into Hadana's Climb? No, I don't think Climb does it. I think we have to Hydra for four and make our opponent use some removal here. Trades well enough with Wildgrove Walker. Doesn't trade well with Jade Light Ranger. They're just going to play this though and buff them. You know, actually, thinking about our mana base, I'm really not sure what I was doing putting the Blanchwood armors in here anyways. Um, I suppose I was, like, replicating a previous, like, hexproof deck that I had put together that was less reliant on blue. But I think there's actually too many islands in this deck to be able to get away with Blanchwood armor. Oh, opponent uses removal. I am perfectly fine with that. Yep, take our beats. Down to nine. Vivian Reed. Really would have liked. You know, perhaps with our... Instead of Spell Pierce and Blanchwood Armor, perhaps Blink of an Eye being main board over any kind of counter interaction would be more preferable. Because one, we can ditch blockers. I don't know if I want to show our opponent anything that we're doing, because I don't think we're winning this. I suppose we can show him Vivian Reed, because we're not going to keep Vivian Reed. Uh, I can reveal a Wild Growth Walker to him, that's fine. No attacks. We'll just uh, block and block on this turn. Actually, we'll just double block Jade Light Ranger here. Or do we have to single block it and play Carnage Tyrant? I don't think we have any option either way. If we if we single block it, they can swing in. Oh, they're taking the bait. They're swinging at Vivian. We're not dead. That's phenomenal. All right, yeah, yeah. Eat that up. So. Now Carney T hits the table. Uh, we will take six next turn. Or we can just take two next turn, depending on what I want to do with it. Or we can Wild Growth Walker into Branch Walker with a map. Maybe map. I think I like this, actually. I want to go wide. Um, be able to get a couple of good double blocks, a couple of chumps off, and then play Carney T. Does our opponent have counters? That would be disastrous. Well, that's a thing. The one time Spell Pierce has paid off, baby. <laughs> Alright, so we get a land. Play a land. Um, I don't think mapping here is worth a damn. I think we're just going to pass this. Vivian Reed does not do it for him. So, oh, he doesn't swing. This is getting spicy. So I think we Carney T and say what's up.
They play their own Carney T. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Lucky one time. That works. This plays. So now. We must pass, and they must use Vivian Reed's uh, enchantment destruction on either Blanchwood or Hadana's climb. If I were them, I would take out Blanchwood. Sometimes restoration means retribution. Well, I guess if I had Jade Light Ranger in my hand, I would take out Hadana's climb. I think despite our opponent punting once, they're still going to get us here. So, map. Wild Growth Walker. Scry with map. Force to the bottom. No attacks. We are Chump Block City here. We're still at 8-7. Eight, eight, Do it. Make me respect. I should have upkeep scryed. I keep not setting this stop. I guess it wouldn't have mattered. So, let's play another chump blocker. Pass the turn. So we'll definitely bring in Immortal Sun here. It's interesting that they bring that uh, Admiral's Order. And they play that Siren Lookout. That's interesting. So this is definitely in an unwinnable situation here. So we're going to we're gonna scry another land at the bottom. And draw a Wild Growth Walker. So what series of draws could we make to be able to salvage this? The wild so with, with their Vivian Reed online, we're going to have a really hard time here. And they play the Field of Ruin. Blow up our Treasure Cove. That's pretty mean. Grab a forest. Still no swings. Well, we will definitely fucking branch walker. What's up with it? Absolutely. We're back up to 21, baby. Unfortunately, their card advantage engine is just going to outproduce us a lot. However, perhaps we take this all the way to the mill. Like I'm, I'm honestly like super tired of this game already. Like, I really don't like these like ultra late game scenarios like this in a deck that's supposed to win on like turn five. But we're not actually strictly dead yet, and our opponent hasn't shown us an answer. And we actually have the ability to play Hadana's and flip it in the same turn, because we have Wild Growth Walker. Balance comes. At which point we could actually take out... Yep, yeah, so he plays that. What, are you debating on it? Oh, you're just going to get him with the flyer? Yeah, I, I get that.
Uh, more explore is fine. We're uh, we're honestly in the market for Hadana's climb, and that's about it. Being able to insta Hadana's climb without them having a field of ruin on the table, flip it, and then immediately like beat the piss out of. I mean, it has to be soon because, like, if they get the the Vivian emblem, like we're just super dead. Yep. Yep. <laughs> give me a, uh, give me a badass blink of an eye here. Make this man respect. Gets in with his flyer. That is an evolving wilds. Take a forest. No attacks. Opponent's down to 25 cards. We have to kill them... soon. Like, super soon. Like, Vivian's gotta go step one. Or we need to get Hadana's Climb. Or blink of an eye for Wild Growth Walker. Oh, we haven't sideboarded yet. It's in the sideboard. That's unfortunate. I've been playing this guy for so long, I thought we were on game two already. Oh, Jade Light Ranger. This is... I apologize. This is the most boring bullshit. I would almost rather be Teferi Emblemed, just so I could stop. Yeah, press all them buttons, buddy. Nope. So we have two Hidanas in the deck. One of them was at the bottom, and then we uh, Evolving Wilds. Oh, here we go again. Well, that is a negate. Oh, he pitches it. You clown. If you had kept that, I would have conceded. Do you not realize that our only outs against you are non-creature spells? I'm done with this turn. I'm done with this turn. There you go. Clear stack. Well, I don't feel like playing this out anymore. So what we're going to do is aggressively mulligan against, or uh, aggressively sideboard. The uh, blink of an eyes are so good against wild growth walkers once they get going. Uh, dive down seems less good. Immortal sun seems fine. We're going to take our Vivian out and our hungering hydra out. Maybe we leave our Hydra in. All the Blanchwoods are out. The Spell Pierces are out. Uh, mm, I don't know about Dive Down. Alright, Vivian Death Gorge. I think I've played against this guy before. Organize the Snorlax with a zero. We're on the play. Uh, of course.
Lands, lands, lands. Lots and lots of lands. God damn it. So Immortal Sun there is fine. If he wants to trade this Branch Walker, I will. He has his own Hadana's climb. <laughs> in that case, I am uh, I am glad we kept the one Vivian in. So we are going to drop our Hexproof Horse, swing in our Jade Light Ranger, pass the turn. Yep. Oh, he ditches Admiral's Order. That's interesting. Gets the Wing Temple. I think we want to hold the blink of an eye. Yeah, so we will... Swing the horse. Yep. Pass the turn. Carney T. Really? Now we trade favorably with Carnage Tyrant, and I have our own Carnage Tyrant. Well, I mean, we, we get two for one, but we have our own Carnage Tyrant afterwards. Which is really nice. Oh yeah, or you can just swing for 14, that's fine too. So, uh, we're pretty much just dead, huh? I didn't think about that. So if we, what do we have? Is there any method here? Is this a lethal puzzle? So first things first, we're going to play a land. Hadana's Climb does nothing. Because I only have one counter on Jade Light Ranger. If I... Man, not having any Reach guys in this deck kind of seems... Like a bit of an oversight. We're just dead here. I would have had to have blink of an eye of the Hadana's but I was not able. So we might as well just explore and see what we get. Yep, that's whatever. Because that's still too much. So we'll Carney T, give him the GG, and uh, swing out. Uh, he's taking too fucking long. Too long, bro! I scooped. Our opponent had Hadana's climb the entire time. I'm really salty about that. Alright, I'm not really salty about it, but that's... Getting beat with your own mechanic in a fucking Merfolk deck? That's just embarrassing. Alright, so we go 3-2. and two. Uh, I feel a little robbed with that. We didn't really uh, get a lot of cooperation out of our deck that time. Yeah, 25 lands, and yet we had Mana Flood 
literally every match, almost every game. So let's let's uh, less salts, more blink of an eye's on the main board. Uh, we'll take the spell pierces out. We'll move spell pierce for. Yeah, so blink of an eye here. So let's grab spell pierce. Two in the sideboard, maybe three in the sideboard. I think two is fine. All of the Blanche Woods are out because with 12 Forest, it just doesn't seem as good. And perhaps. Perhaps more Hungering Hydras. They do easier flip Hadana's Climb. Do I want to spend wild cards on that? I guess it doesn't matter. Perhaps two Vivians in the main board as well, since we're not uh, Immortal Sunning main board. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. I would uh, I would consider another Hadana's climb, but the thing is, is we we want to draw one of them, but the second one's really bad. You know what I mean? So four of just doesn't seem correct. Uh, four Vine Mares in the main board seem fine. I could even be persuaded to four Carnage Tyrants if we moved from Lana War Elves and also included uh, Druid of the Cow. But as it is, I think four Vine Mares, seven Hexproof creatures are pretty good in addition to the, the 12 creature Explore package. Now with Treasure Map, I think Treasure Map is fine. So in the, in the sideboard, I don't think going up another Immortal Sun is worthwhile. Perhaps... Perhaps Gol uh, Golgari hate of, of some sort. I don't think we want an Essence Scatter. I don't think we want regular... Uh... That is kind of cute. I hadn't, I hadn't really considered this card before. But being able to attack and then one mana counter... That's probably something our deck would be interested in. I'm not really interested in like the regular package of stuff. Uh, I've considered Thorn Lieutenant just because Thorn Lieutenant is like probably the best green creature in, in standard right now. Like it's, it's just Thorn Lieutenant is such a, a good two for one engine. Uh, one like a two a two cost two three that generates extra tokens when he's a spell of an ability, uh, like target a spell or an ability, like that's that's already good enough. The problem with it though is it doesn't it doesn't actually add anything. Like it doesn't interact with anything we're trying to do. Uh, he doesn't get plus one plus one counters. He doesn't he doesn't really have anything going on. Now I could see like Shaper Sanctuary just because against the spot removal decks like Golgari. Uh, where they're they're using assassins trophies and things of that nature against us. Shaper Sanctuary is really good against Jeskai. It's super good against uh, Drakes. It's really good. So perhaps perhaps dropping a dive down for two Shapers is an option. I've considered Syncopates as well, just because we have the ability to generate a lot of mana via the forty-two percent of our deck that's fucking land. And, you know, the, uh, the Land of War Elves, the treasure maps. We have the ability to get ahead on mana, which makes Syncopate really good. But it, I don't want this deck to be a control deck. I'm okay with it protecting itself, but I don't want it to be control heavy. We don't play against enough discard stuff that Null Hide Ferox... Like, I don't see... In the competitive constructed, I almost never see the Disinformation Campaign decks, which is the only time I would bother running Null Hide Ferox. I do occasionally run across... The uh, Grixis control with Nicol Bolas. But I think I think I would be willing to try it now with the 75 and see what we get. I think it's a little bit more more stable. I could possibly see running uh, a Diamond Mare, but the problem is... is No, I, I guess we can, because every spell on the deck is green with the exception of Blink of an Eye. And then in the sideboard, Dive Down and Spell Pierce. So... It's dead on our treasure maps and then like our two of inclusions for the sideboard. It's possible that 
it's worthwhile to consider the mirror. Like, maybe I want to use River's Rebuke in the sideboard. River's Rebuke in that last game we played, in the second game, the, the last match, the second game, River's Rebuke would have just outright won the game for us. So maybe, maybe that's a thing that we could think of. Excuse me. I don't know what I would drop it for, though, because Damping Spirit to shut down Drake's uh, keeps this more even. Amulet of Safekeeping is really good against that. I guess Silent Gravesone. Drop those for River's Rebuke. I think that would give us a better option than the Mirror, because we don't really have a board wipe uh, that would lead itself to winning that, that Mirror match like it uh, like we had in the last match there. So I think, uh, I think on the next one, uh, we'll try it like this. And uh, that's all I got for now. Oh, I guess I can open up my uh, my daily packs, huh? See what we get. Stuff I've already got. And stuff I've already got. Alright, so that's cute. 